Now, first of all, before we go on, this is one heck of a transition. Here was this young man talking about war and all the suffering, and I'm coming to you and say, would you like to buy a soda? Meaning, my God, how do you transition like that? You can't. So first of all, I would like for everyone here to stand up, please, and applaud one more time for those young men and women who are serving, all right? One more, for those that serve and those that are serving. Thank you so much, all right? So, if you know anything about the brain, you know the brain consumes 20% of the body's energy. Right now, you all are extremely hungry. Your brain has absolutely no desire to hear me talk, <laughs> right? None. Let's be real about it. So I could give you a terribly boring lecture about neuroscience, or I could explain neuroscience through a hip-hop song. What would you prefer? Thank you. Could you hit it, please? Yeah, yeah. What up? Come on. Yo, you ready to do this? Let me listen to your brain. Let me tune into your brain. Let me pick up on your brain. I'ma listen to your brain. Let me listen to your brain. Let me tune into your brain. Let me pick up on your brain. I'ma listen to your brain. Welcome to my world, young cobras. You now in tune with Dr. Nero Focus. I was born with the power to read your brain activity. I'm a G. Neuroscience is the study of the brain. How it structured the whole shebang. This is how it works. Your brain's a series of complex networks. Some form G's, some form jerks. Mom form perfect. That's my word. 100 billion brain cells chilling in your head. Neurons, they be chilling in your head. And how they connect, the network is set. These activate when stimulus is met. Stimuli, so fly eye. Swoop in with sensors to feel on they vibes. My technology is called EEG, electroencephalography. And each of those sensors do more work than a million bench presses. Now your brain waves I measure at what rate? 2,000 times a second. Yeah, I know, quite impressive, but please stay tuned. There's still more lessons. Let me listen to your brain. Let me tune into your brain. Let me pick up on your brain. I'm gonna listen to your brain. Let me listen to your brain. Let me tune into your brain. Let me pick up on your brain. I'm gonna listen to your brain. Verse two, how do you do? I bet you're wondering how I make my loot. I bet you question how I can push this coupe, how I rock fly suits and wear Versace boots. Well, come closer for a listen. Sit down, turn on your television. You see that car, see that brand? You see the package that she's holding in her hand? Sam, your p 300 is off the charts. Welcome to the world of the neuro market. We measure neurometrics. This ain't gym class of stupid Petrus. I can see when emotions are engaged. I can see the attention that you paid. I can see what's stored in your memories. Don't worry, they can't see between you and me. I measure in the subconscious. To hear what you're thinking, the knowledge is righteous. I'm not like them other guys who hide behind mirrors while you run the lights. They only ask questions. I gain insight in every session. Like purchase intent, the novelty found in awareness that's kept. We measure the full brain. This ain't biometrics or headbands, man. Cause the brain drives the body. In my case, a caddy, a Porsche, and an Audi. Need market research? Then call me. ERP or TCE and prime me. Dr. Nero Focus, I always pop out. So relax your cortex and step in my house. Yeah. Let me listen to your brain. Let me tune into your brain, let me pick up on your brain, I'ma listen to your brain. Let me listen to your brain. Let me tune into your brain, let me pick up on your brain, I'ma listen to your brain.
Excellent. So it's like the guys in Big Bang Theory decided to make a video, right? Something like that. So who said that people who do market research can't have a lot of fun? So what I thought I'll do today is to kind of tell you some amazing new areas that neuroscience is going in. But you, whenever you apply something as interesting and complicated as neuroscience, you don't pick up a book at Barnes & Noble called Neuroscience for Dummies and try to do it in your lab the next day, right? So we have with us, working with us, let me see if this thing will work, right? I'm trying to get perfect, there you go. So in these new frontiers, it's very important to know who the people that work in the area of neuroscience taking it forward are. And the guy at the very left is Dr. Eric Kandel, winner of the Nobel Prize in Medicine for Human Memory. On the other side, at the other extreme, the man that looks like he's out on parole is actually Professor Earl Miller from MIT, right? There's a whole bunch of amazing people that work very, very closely with us on taking this forward. Now, as you can see, there is nobody from Stanford. Why? I'm from Berkeley, and there will never be a Stanford guy on this chart. <laughs> right? So if you, if you ask yourself, what do we measure, we found something interesting. You know, if you ever go to a hospital, they'll put an EG cap on your head that has gels and everything, and you sit there like a statue for a long time, right? In the world of market research, I realized early on, listen, if I bring a consumer and she sits in the chair and I put all this gel on her head, it's gonna mess up her hair, right? Who wants to have a really pissed off consumer doing research with you, right? So we created some of the world's first gels that are leave-in conditioners. So not only do you come and do an experiment with me, you walk out and your hair looks fantastic, <laughs> right? But that is what I call taking it the next step forward, yeah? And this we, cre we also created the world's first Bluetooth wireless headset. You wear it at home. Imagine, imagine what can happen if we had a set of games that were developed using this headset, right? Is it possible that the world of Kinect can be revolutionized, go the next step forward, because your mental state is part of the game now? Is it possible that automobiles, because usually in, in, in the entire world of automotive, they say there are three factors that govern safety, and only three. Number one, the automobile. Number two, the environment. And number three, the driver's mental state. Very simple. The first two, everyone has access to. You know what the state of the automobile is. You know what the state of the environment is. Do you know what the driver's state is? You don't. Is it possible through these Bluetooth wireless headsets, we could get the driver's state and therefore push the, the, the entire state of the technology forward? Neuroscience is opening some unbelievably interesting ways. Now, um, the, the young man here talked about a war just a few minutes ago, right? When I was in Tel Aviv, I, I told the Israeli press, listen, it is possible to measure brain waves of people reacting to stimuli. Is it possible that before you guys go negotiate with somebody, we could actually run your proposals with the headset, figure out how people react to anything? Perhaps modify language. Perhaps frame it differently. Is it possible that treaties will be negotiated differently because we have true access to what somebody else looks at it? How do they feel about it? It's possible, right? That world is set to change very soon. How we negotiate, how we talk to anybody can be changed. Is it possible that with this headset, we could eliminate the notion of a boring class? So here are the kids sitting around. If you had headsets on all of you, I would know how many of you are really digging what I'm saying and how many of you are thinking about the sandwich, right? It's possible. So it's possible that if you had access to mental states, a teacher in a classroom could know how somebody feels and perhaps modify the way they present perhaps our education system, which always assume I will offer you the standard set of things for everyone can change too, right? There are huge possibilities of what can happen if only we had access to the brain state. Now, I keep using the word brain state, brain state. What does it really mean? So there are just three metrics that I want to talk about, and, I, and the video told you about it, right? 
is just attention. Second by second, you measure attention. How much attention are you paying to whatever it is you're watching or you're experiencing? By the way, do you know what is the worst environment for the human brain? Absolute worst. I'll tell you what it is. It is a retail store. Can you believe it? They spend trillions of dollars creating products and taking it to the store to the worst environment. Why is it the most hostile environment for the brain? Simple. When you walk into a store, 100 million bits of information rush at you. You know how many the brain, kind of the brain can process? 40 bits a second. Incoming is 100 million. I can process 40. And you know, the brain consumes 20% of your body's energy. So when it's processing all this nonsense, it just gets tired. So here you are, pushing your little cart through the store, and you may be like Paul Ryan doing P90X and everything, and you walk around and you say, my God, I'm feeling tired after two aisles. What's wrong with me? Right? Nothing's wrong with you. You're perfectly healthy. Right? It is just that your brain got tired. It's just consuming 20% of your body's energy. So we measure attention directly at the brain. The next thing that you measure, very important to measure, emotional engagement. How emotionally engaged are you with whatever it is you're watching or you're experiencing? Why is it hard to measure? The funny thing about emotions is this. The act of thinking about a feeling changes the feeling, right? So if I go through a survey and say, how do you really feel about this great Dr. Pradeep's talk? And you say, well, let me think about it. The more you think about it, you're messing it up. So the worst thing you all can do is to go home to your significant others, your boyfriends, your girlfriends, your husbands, your wives, whatever it is, and go and ask them this really ridiculous question. Do you really love me? And the more they think about it, <laughs> whatever answer they give you, I wouldn't put too much credibility on that, right? So emotions are very hard to measure. Now, there is this amazing pianist that played, right? Spectacularly beautiful. They were good looking, the music was beautiful, it was perfect combination, right? And you ask yourself, if they came to you and said, you know, what is the piece of the music that you loved? You would have no clue how to answer the question. You know there was something good, but these guys are playing and they're playing for a long time and they would love to know what is the piece of what they played was spectacularly attractive. Wouldn't you guys like to know that? Yes, yes, they're too busy, right? <laughs> now, and there is no language for you to talk about it. None, unless I measure your brain. Where in second by second, I know where you were emotionally engaged and where you were not. It can alter how music is created. It can alter how gaming is done. Because you know, if you've ever done research on video games, the kids that play it, uh, you go and ask them, so how did you like the game? And you will get an amazing answer. It's got four letters, it's called cool. They tell you, cool. How the hell are you supposed to interpret cool? Right? By having access to the brain state, you know what part of it was emotionally engaging and what part was not. And the last thing is memory retention. What part of what you watched are you moved to memory? You can know second by second. What part of this conversation did you move to memory? You know very precisely. The number of things you can do with it are extraordinarily profound. So it is not just the world of marketing and messaging. You could alter the world of education. The way a parent talks to a child can be entirely different. So from all of this, you also get the additional metrics of purchase intent, novelty or newness, understanding or comprehension. All of these are very important commercially, very important for a number of other purposes. I'm not gonna skip, I'm gonna skip through this thing and tell you something else that we think was fascinating. So last year, I asked my neuroscience team, I want you to give me the answer to two important questions. Why do people log into Facebook? Why do people post? Sometimes you log in, you won't post, right? So why do people log in? Why do people post? The usual garden variety answers, oh, I want to know what my friends are doing, their parties, why their children always seem to be doing better than my children. You don't want to know all of these things, right? <laughs> Ostensibly, you may say you want to know, but that's really not what it is. Why do people log in? Why do people post? We use neuroscience to find the answers. They are extraordinarily interesting. I'm not gonna tell you those answers right now, because I have to tease you a little bit. So 
consider this my tease. And if you really want to talk about it, I'll be outside waiting for you, yeah? But after all of this, I asked myself a very important question. I've been sitting around studying everybody's creative for the last seven years, right? This, is the, this company is around the world, and Nielsen acquired the company last year and integrated with everything that they're doing. But NeuroFocus to this day measured what everybody else did. And we learned so many amazing lessons. So 10 days, just 10 days ago, the CEO of Nielsen and I sat down together and said, to heck with it, I'm just tired of measuring what everybody else does, right? I want to go a step further, really one step further. And we want to take all the insights that we got from how everybody else does what they do, what works, what doesn't work, and create the world's first and only neuropowered creative agency ground up. So the goal is to completely rock, transform, and shake the world of creative. We are tired of waiting for 200 years for the next Mozart to show up. We've been waiting. He hasn't shown up yet, right? So idea is if you knew what worked and what didn't work with a level of clarity and insights directly from the brain, should it not naturally lead to the next step of the evolution? Create the world's first neuropowered creative. Everything that we do is based and built through neuroscience. In addition, there is a huge amount of data everybody talks about. Everybody talks about this thing called the big data and the cloud. I'm just sick of hearing those terms, right? Just really sick of it. And hopefully people have been using it here. I don't know, right? I haven't seen here all these days. But the funny thing is this. Big data is meaningless unless you can get some insights from it. Insights are meaningless unless you can do something with it. And whatever you do is meaningless unless you get some results from it, right? So that is the, <laughs> thank you, somebody feels the same way. In this entire crowd, there is one lone human being empathizing. That's awesome. Oh, the second one. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> so the idea is to build this creative ground up using all these insights from the brain. And one of the things that we want to do as part of this is to also revolutionize education. Imagine if we advertised algebra to children. Imagine if we advertised the periodic table and organic chemistry to teenagers. Would we create a nation of scientists? Yeah? So some proceeds of this new agency we create will 100% be dedicated to advertising science and mathematics to children. That's part of the goal, my friends. Have a great day. Thanks. Thank you.